Iceland has become a real leader in food innovation in the last couple of years, and it's all down to head chef Neil Nugent. Oh, How are you, pal? You all right? Good. Oh, yeah. good. good journey? Yeah, good. Let's good. get a brew. Come on. Neil has taken Michelin starred cooking techniques and put them into some of the most important food ranges in the UK. You see these in kind of Michelin restaurants. He was responsible for the Heston range, the Delia range and the Duchy range. We're just about to do something which I can't show you. <laughs> <laughs> Today, I'm going behind the scenes at his test kitchen as he's going to share with me some of his favourite little tips and tricks to improve your food at home. Andy shares a top secret new ingredient from Japan. It's that good, it's cheating. <laughs> it's not cheating. So I've just made a japati mix, 300 wholemeal flour and 200 water, mix it together, tiny bit of oil and salt and just let it rest for 10, 20 minutes okay. and then you're ready to go and you're just doing a little fall, pin it out. So now we just pat off all that excess flour, it's not very nice to eat and it kind of burns in the pan. You use the back of your hand so your fingers don't go through yeah. it and then we just pop him into a medium hot pan. You don't want him kind of totally fired up, move it like a pancake in a pan, yes. you can feel like and you're you can moving. See, can't and then yeah. on, he go, on he goes to the flame. It's great, it looks just like a proper chapati. Patty. <laughs> there you go. That's what your chapati is all about, I think. How quick was that? Well? I know, it's super speedy, isn't it? And we'll just do a little chapati breakfast. Chapati, chana dal, fried egg, unbelievable Let's breakfast. Do it, chef. There you go, your breakfast. And you drop some chilli flakes Just some chilli flakes onto the, onto the egg and it just like livens it up. Great Indian breakfast. How good is that? And then you served it with? This is the Mumbai Street Co. Um, uh, chana dal. This is a way of preparing a tandoor chicken without having a tandoor. Take the skin off the chicken. So once you've got the skin off, make a few incisions into the meat. So again, the marinade gets in there. And then we just chuck it in our yogurt mix, which that yogurt mix is basically our tikka sauce with some yogurt in there. Put it all over the chicken, leave it there couple of hours if you can and then we do that beer can technique yeah yeah we call this cobra chicken but cobra doesn't come in cans that i'm aware of so we empty a bit of lemonade or whatever uh, pour a bit of cobra beer in put the beer can under the chicken and that can go in your barbecue or into your oven and then we just bake that yogurt crust over amazing that sounds great oh wow that's ready to it go it looks amazing right let's try it So we've got the Mumbai Street Co beetroot curry, the tandoor chicken, a little bit of pickle in a little lime, a bit of sesame seed to finish it. Mate, it looks well, amazing. <laughs> chicken. <laughs> what do we think? Chicken's great. You yeah. just get that, that tandoor vibe, but the uh, beetroot's amazing. Right, so what's next? So what's this dunpukt thing? Yeah, dunpukt. It's from Northern India. It's, it's a dish that's cooked in a pot with a chapati lid. But what we're going to do is just fill our little pots with a couple of our street food bits. Kima lamb, pop in halfway, and then I'm just going to top it with rice. Okay. Uh, so this is the royal pilar. And then what we're going to do is just pin a bit of pastry on top. And chapati mixture chapati again. Chapati mix. I'm just going to put a little bit of garlic butter on the top. Like you would do if you were making a pie, just brush yeah. around with some water. We just pin it on. What I like to do is not trim it. Yeah. Have them little crusty yeah, so you've little got bits. Those gnarly bits on the yeah, side yeah, and yeah. the gooey bits. Yeah, yeah. And there he goes. You just bake him in the oven. How simple and cool is that? That's yeah. really good. So here it is. I mean, look at that. It's. <laughs> oh, wow. Pop it in the what bowl. a cool way to kind of get people excited again about yeah. curry. And this is just a bit of the garlic, but you don't need to put this on. You can yeah, give a little bit of garlic. It yeah, it's going to. Gumptious and delicious. Wait, there you go. You got your, your garlic chapati on top of here. Amazing. Pie. Love it. Right, let's do it. Oh, it's really like crispy and crunchy, yeah. isn't it? Remember, we've got the rice and we've got the lamb at the bottom. Amazing. Oh, it's genius. Genius with a crusty top, isn't it? Magic, isn't it? Can I show you something new we're working on? We haven't used it yet, but it's a really interesting Japanese technique of seasoning stuff. Totally, totally. Okay. Well, that's cool. Neil, what have you got here? Well, you know, we're like kind of always searching for flavor and techniques to get flavor, and especially as you know, people associate flavor with salt. Salt targets are so sort of tricky. You know, we've used red miso before. We've put it in a burger, and it makes it taste really beefy, salty, seasoned. But there's this new kid on the block. 
um, sure like this is a gym. brand new, brand new product. Brand new product, and um, you know, rather than try and explain it myself, I'll, our resident scientist <laughs> will get along, which is which is Dave. But uh, Shokuji. Sure How you doing, John? How's it going? Yeah, You're all good, right. Good, good. So, tell me about this new product. Right. So Neil's always, always, always challenging us on how to what the next miso is and what the next flavour is. So I, I started doing some research and I came across um, Shio Koji. Not in this form, it's in this form. So it's actually what they make miso out of. And, and what's it good for? It's, good, it, it's, 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 it's a salt replacer. Okay. It, um, but it, it adds so much more than salt. Salt's yes. quite a flat line flavour. Although it's great, it's quite a flat. This adds depth and length and it's amazing. I'm going to show you a little recipe. Can Do you want a little taste? Little? Yeah, of course you can. Smell it first though, it smells amazing. Wow. It's like a, a really sort of refreshing. It's really bright. You think yes, it's going to be exactly. really bright? I, yeah, exactly. Wow. But it's so much more than salt. Oh, it's got that umami sort yeah. of like real and, depth to and it. That's it. And I'm going to show you a quick recipe that we, we kind of okay. we've been working on. And it's a little bit of the shio koji, a little bit of soy sauce, a little bit of ginger, a little bit of garlic, and some miso powder. Combine all that together, and I just have to finish on in a little squeeze of lime. Wow. So it's like the best Japanese marinade you'll ever eat. It it's just, it, it, it's that good, it's cheap. So we made some of this dressing earlier on. We've been marinating some sea bass just for 20 minutes or so, and we're going to show you what it's like without and what it's like with. Amazing. So Neil's doing that now. Okay, so we'll try with salt. Nice. Okay, it's nice delicious. Yeah. Nicely cooked. Okay. Oh wow, mm. that's incredible. There's no salt in that. There's, there's traces of salt within the mix, but you know, it's, it's so much more, it's longer. It's, it's so mm, much better, mm, isn't it? Mm. It's like, there's just so much more to it. Mm. Wow, that's delicious. That's really special. Yes. Mm. That was really interesting for me, to see all those techniques that he used in the Michelin starred restaurants now getting into the food that he puts into the supermarkets. If you want to see more videos like this behind the scenes, then let me know in the comment box below. Thanks, mate. Okay, go.